Hey everyone, my name is Dawn. Welcome to Enhanced English. And today I'm actually going to go over some really key advice and points and things you need to know if you are trying to get a job, especially for an English speaking company, or if you are just trying to get into an interview, then these are some tips, some advice, and also some examples for you to go off of so that hopefully you are going to be very successful for your job interview. All right, so let's first talk about these cultural differences. So there is a lot of cultural differences between like North America, even between us and Europe, or between Latin America. All like everybody around the world has a different type of way to kind of communicate with businesses. So I will let you know for North America, it is much more relaxed than you would assume, but it's also very important to make a very good first impression. Well, yeah, it's very important to make a good first impression. So let's go over the basics. So as you submit your resume, it's actually not a key thing. In North America, they actually do not expect you to submit a photo. They do not want to know your age unless they ask in the interview. So those are a few things that you actually do not need to include in your resume. I know in lots of parts in Latin America, it's really common to have like your photo attached to your resume, but just avoid that if you're applying for jobs in North America because they actually don't want to see that. And so because it's not necessary, just don't include it. The reason why they do this is because they don't want to have any type of prejudice before they even get to know you. So just don't include it. Just don't do it. All right, so going off of first impressions, first impressions are so important. You must know this already. And first impressions for especially North Americans, it's really important that when you meet them, that you give them a nice firm handshake. I'm not talking about a tight grip. All I mean is just to have like a little firm, but not too hard of a handshake and not too loose of a handshake. They really pride themselves on having a proper handshake. It's so funny, actually when I was in high school, we had an entire class one day of how to give a proper handshake. And why? Because it actually is very important for first impressions. So go ahead and make sure that you have a good firm handshake. Well, no, well, he was smart and he had a firm handshake. Next thing is that you really want to make sure that you make eye contact with whoever is interviewing you. This can be especially hard if you are being interviewed by a panel. Maybe there are two or three people there. You want to like make sure that you are talking to each of them and that you don't forget one person. So make sure that you are engaged in conversation, making sure that you are focused, you are talking to them, to their eyes, that will help them understand that you are a very comfortable person and confident. Next thing is that you really prepare before you go into your interview. And preparing does not just mean how to answer questions properly. Of course, that's a big part of it. But you really want to make sure that you do your research on this company who are interviewing you. Why? Because they are going to ask you, so like, why do you want to work with us? Oh, well, because I've researched your company, I've seen your reputation, I've seen all of the great things you've done for charity in our community, and I want to be involved in that. Like, that is going to make them feel like, wow, okay, they did their research about us. Like, they know our numbers, they know our mission, they understand that. And then by you saying, like, I wanna be part of that because of what you've created, I want to be part of that as well. And so that is going to make them feel like, ah, oh, this person understands us. We don't have to teach it to them. They already researched that. That is going to leave a great first impression. And also this is important because you want to make sure that you have questions available. Usually they all are always actually. Interviewers would be like, okay, do you have any questions for us? They never even asked me any questions. Okay, that's the perfect time to also exemplify that you have been researching them. So you can say, okay, where do you see this company in the next quarter? Or how would my position be able to support this goal? Being able to really dig deep into like, I understand this is your vision, and then asking like, okay, like, how, how does this role support that vision? That's really gonna help them feel like, oh, 
hey, they, this person really, really gets us. So definitely consider that. Do lots of research beforehand. It's really hard to do this for every single company, especially if you're trying to just apply everywhere. That's not going to cut it. You really have to make sure that you are really researching properly each company, even if you're going to do like 20 interviews. All right, this next thing, especially for your English, make sure that you really understand what they are asking you before you answer. Now, it can be hard, and I've been in this position before too when I had to explain something in French where you think you heard it correctly the first time, and then you're like double guessing, you're second guessing yourself, and you're like, oh, but I'm just gonna, just, I'm just gonna say something. And then you start talking about something totally random, and the interview was like, no, wait, what? Like, that's not the question. So you really want to make sure that you really understand the question first before you answer. And if you don't, if you really don't know, then just ask them, just say like, oh, do you mind explaining that further? Or could you ask that in a different way? And I'm sure they would be happy to do that for you because it is so important that you actually understand the question before you answer. And in their desperation, they turned to a man they didn't fully understand. Okay, this next one is to remain as positive as possible. So they are not interested in what your last drama was with your last job, if it ended poorly. It's not so much about that. You want to make sure that you really show that whatever experience you've had, you've had a positive outcome. So maybe you had a really negative experience and if they're asking you about that, really show them, well, all of this like bad stuff happened. However, I learned from this. This is what happened. There was something positive in the end. Even even if it wasn't something big for the company, I still learned something from it. So really make sure that you always set a positive tone for whatever you talk about. So you don't want to be bad mouthing. So that's a expression for like, you don't want to talk badly about a former employer, a former employee, your colleagues, former teams. You never want to talk bad about them, never bad mouth them always be positive. And if you wanted to share that you had a negative experience, always say that it led to a positive learning experience because at least they will say, okay, this person's not full of drama. This person is actually intuitive and they learn something. So keep that in mind. This next one is to really not let your ego burst. <laughs> It is so hard during an interview not to be too shy about yourself, but also not to explode your ego too much. There has to be a little middle ground here. Why? Because imagine if the interviewer asks you, please describe a situation where you made a mistake and how you learned from it. The last thing you want to do is say, well, I just made like, I didn't make any mistakes because I'm just such a good worker. Actually, it wasn't my fault. It was other people's fault and blah, blah, blah. That's called gaslighting. <laughs> if you have an interviewer who is asking you this question, it's because they actually want to know. They don't want to hear about your ego. They don't want to hear about how well you actually work. A lot of people, even in North America, they like to portray themselves as like, oh, actually, I'm perfect. <laughs> I don't make mistakes. But the reality is, of course you make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. They really want to hear a time where you made a mistake and how you fixed it and what the outcome was. So just keep that in mind. Do not try to make it out to be like, oh, I'm actually perfect. I'm just like, I'm just such a hard worker. My only mistake is that I'm a hard worker. <laughs> I've heard that before and it's just, it's bad taste. They're going to see right through it. They are not going to enjoy that response. So actually think of a true mistake that you made and what the outcome was. Now, for a lot of interview questions, they are going to want to ask about your capabilities. And so to help you with that, then always think about the acronym STAR. That stands for situation, task, action, and result. And so think about STAR all the time. And that will help you actually find and formulate a correct response about something, a situation in the past. So let's do an example with STAR. The interviewer asks you, tell me about a time when you had to demonstrate your leadership skills. Okay, so the way you would respond is, okay, what's the situation first? Well, in my last job, 
the digital marketing agency I was working for were not getting enough emails. They were not getting enough people opting in. And I saw this as a situation. And so next one is task. So my job was to make sure more people were signing up into our emailing. Okay, what's the action you took? Well, I went ahead and I organized a meeting with all of our team members and together we created this roadmap, this plan that we have created so that we can try to optimize and get as many email opt-ins as possible. So what's the result? And be very specific with results. Well, after three months, there was a 25% increase in our email opt-ins because of the plan we created with my team. But I understand that I was the one who took initiative in this and I created the plan with other team members to make these results happen. People want to know these things. Interviewers want to know numbers. They want to know exactly what you were able to do in the past so that they can see how you can benefit their company. All right, and here's another example. So if the interview asks you, give me an example of a time when you faced a problem at work. How did you handle it? All right, you can say, okay, situation S. Well, there was a time when my manager had taken up a few orders for flowers. So I'm at a florist shop and there's lots of orders coming in and my boss had accidentally taken up too many offers, meaning that there was so many offers that two of them got mistaken. And so that was the situation. Okay, next one is T, the task. So my job was to make sure that all of the customers got to the right place, the right flowers to the right person. All right, A, action. Because it was so busy in the floor shop already, I couldn't expect this mistake to just be solved on its own. And so I decided to take the initiative. I told my boss, even though it was technically her mistake, that I was gonna be able to handle it. She could just focus on making the rest of the arrangements. And so, and so I called both customers to explain the situation, apologized profusely about the mistake, offered them a little discount for their next time shopping with us, and it seemed to be quite happy in the end. And the result are, everybody was happy in the end. The customers were both grateful for the time that we spent to reach out to them really quickly, and they were so understanding. And then we also knew that if we take up too many orders on flowers, then we knew that we had to change our processes to make sure a mistake wouldn't be made again. And so, boom, that gives you a really well-rounded, organized and detailed answer of all the characteristics that that interviewer is looking for in you. And so definitely think about that, use STAR. All right, and after the interview, it's really not up to you to decide if you got the job or not. And so the best thing you can do is just reflect reflect. Reflect on how that interview happened. Reflect on the questions they asked you. Reflect on your responses if you feel like you did a good job or not. If you don't get the job, then you can always take something positive from that interview. Maybe it is realizing, oh, I actually didn't really like that interviewer. I didn't really like them. So maybe it's a good thing I didn't get that job. Or maybe think about, oh, they asked me some really different questions. Okay, what questions were they? How can you practice them? And so that is what I would recommend for you. That's all I have to say about that. So if you are trying to get a job right now, let me know, comment down below. I can help you out with your questions if you have any. And if you are trying to accelerate your English, I have a free download down below. And it's just kind of like a little roadmap to help you get from this kind of English to advanced. So take a look at that. And in the meantime, if you are interested in more idioms and expressions to use, here is one all about emotions and how to use your emotions. Take a look over here.